Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. My name is Josh Davis. Uh, I'm Michael Freeman. And you can find us at facebook.com slash users slash groups if you want to post in the live chat or the, um, yeah, the thread that I posted there. Um, and you can find us every Monday live uh, at youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy Monday nights at 9. And you can find the final product. I take this, edit it down, add graphics, and I post this to youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues. And that's posted at 3 o'clock on Wednesdays. So, um, yeah, we've got Liberty Doll tonight. That's pretty cool. What do you think? <laughs> So, uh, Michael, you want to start us off here? Sure. I have a just a thing to add first or two. If I'm not mistaken, we've been receiving requests to turn this into a, a downloadable podcast. Where are we? Where That's are right. we? Um, well, I'm I'm going to try to set up a website for us. Um, I used to have. Um, uh, uh, another show called The Currency of Democracy, and I had a website for that and um, my other projects, but I'm going to bring that back, and so that's going to take a little bit of time, uh, but once that's all set up, um, I'll have um, the audio formats and um, the video formats as well, so all of that will be posted on that website. I'll keep you guys posted about the name and the domain and all that other stuff. So at this point, we can at least use the words soon. It soon. is coming. We'll go with it. it. Is <laughs> All right. we, uh, we, have, we have Liberty Doll with us tonight, uh, a fellow mass holder, Josh. She <laughs> runs some websites and has a little YouTube going. and Very little. Is a pretty cool <laughs> chick, so I guess I'll let you introduce yourself if, if you'd like to. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Nikki, um, and I'm Liberty Doll. Yes, I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> All right, so, uh, li Liberty Doll, what, is, what does that mean? Where, where does that come from? Um, well, so I chose the name Liberty Doll because um, I, or I felt like there was too many people out there already named like Libertarian this or Libertarian that, and it was just really crowded, and... At the time, I was a libertarian, but I was starting to lean more to towards voluntarism, so I didn't want to stick myself with a title that I didn't think was going to end up like being true. Um, so that's why I went with Liberty, and I added the doll because um, I'm really obsessed with like the 50s and rockabilly, and, and I don't know, it's just cool. <laughs> rockabilly is cool. You are definitely right about that. Yeah, that's cool. I, uh, you know, I found you through. I don't know, a cookout, really, but but I, I found your page on Facebook, like, like a year ago, and, and yep. like some of the things you had to say about guns, and, and I know you dip into some of the politics stuff, and I know you get a little bit of backlash for that, and it's it's not entirely my thing, but you are working to promote liberty, and, and, and I, I appreciate that, and you do punk rock and sweet cars and all that fun stuff, too, so... <laughs> So, so that's good. You want to tell us a little about the website? Uh, I just discovered it, as a matter of fact, two months ago. I had no idea. Oh, really? Yep. The blog? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so I got to a point where, um, well, I first started the page itself because um, I became really interested in politics and economics and gun rights and all those things and I really really like to write and sure. I just had trouble you know condensing myself down to a Facebook post because if you know you see a Facebook post and you have to click see more on it like the chances are no one's even gonna click on that and read that so, uh, I, I just quit I just quit a page last. I started this page like like six months ago, and I put so much effort into it, and I gave it away last week over right. reason. So I mean, well, and it's it's basically a full time job to to run a page and to run it well. So yeah. I decided to add extra work to that, um, and came up with a blog so that I could have space to write more of my own thoughts and to write more than like two hundred words. 
basically. <laughs> right on. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I think you've told me the story once or twice, but my memory doesn't do so well. <laughs> um, how, did you, how did you get here? How did you find Anna? You, you guys live in one of the most fascist, tyrannical <laughs> In the motherland. How did that happen? Here. <laughs> it's absolutely <laughs> terrible. Um, well, so, uh, goodness. The funny thing is, so growing up in Massachusetts, you're pretty much taught that everything is either liberal or evil, and there's, like, nothing in between <laughs> at all. Um, I remember one of my high school wow. teachers coming out as a libertarian and catching shit, for, uh, like, for it for like years after that. Yeah. Um, but actually, oddly enough, um, I met my fiance about four years, oh good, oh shit, our anniversary was yesterday. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we met um, like four years ago and he was just um, getting into learning about politics and Ron Paul and um, so he started talking to me about it and some of the things you know when you're first waking up it's like you lose sleep over it you are awake in the middle of the night like staring at the ceiling saying oh my god these terrible things are happening and there's nothing I can do about it so I started with you know um, Ron Paul and so I sort of went from like um, a liberal to conservative and then somewhere in there I had like a weird Alex Jones period where I was just like getting we all, everything. We all do. It's okay. We all do. <laughs> we all do it. Um, and then um, for a while I was just sort of calling myself a libertarian um, and I was not, I was stuck on the questions of oddly enough like okay well how would people from this country trade with another country if there wasn't government. Um, at the time I didn't know anything about economics or markets and then um, I let read Larkin Rose, um, The Iron Web and that was kind of what did it for me. You know, um, we the got a few copies of that. I'm sorry, uh, The Most Dangerous Superstition Changed My Life. Mm -hmm. We have that one, I haven't read it yet, but um, it was The Iron Web and for some reason that sort of just opened my eyes and like answered all these questions um, and then I came over to the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> is it the dark side though? Not really. Mm -hmm. Everyone else thinks yeah. it is, but... <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I read a lot of his, well I've read all of his books and I, I mess with that guy online quite a bit. I, I got I was lucky enough to meet him at Borkfest, and I was. Oh, I saw. I saw the pictures. I was jelly. <laughs> that's like your average person meeting. I don't know their favorite basketball player. I was. Mm -hmm. I was giddy. Why? Um, I just met um, Woods uh, not too long ago um, at a. Uh, Thomas. At, like a conference and. Yeah. That's what great. happened? Oh, you yeah, I saw Tom Woods. Uh, I didn't hear you. I, you cut out. I didn't hear what you said. I uh, I I met Tom Woods at a um, conference. Um, I taped, uh, I taped one of his conferences, and you know, uh, I was going to upload it to YouTube and everything, and I put some of it on uh, one of these uh, shows here, but um, I never uploaded the whole video because all, it was all choppy and everything. But um, yeah. Um, very cool. Very cool. All right. <laughs> um, let's see what else. So, well, there's a lot. So you're getting married. You said the word fiance. It is set in stone. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is. You know, I I only met Pat the one time, and he likes Rand Paul a little too much for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> There's the, well, there's a story behind that. Well, yes. um, Called cognitive dissonance. <laughs> yeah. His uncle is like some big shot for the New Hampshire like GOP and like works with him and was complaining because he thought that Rand Paul was an anarchist. Was yeah. and he came up at like this family gathering over the summer and he was like, "Oh, Rand Paul, he's a dirty <laughs> anarchist." Da, 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 da. So yeah, there's a story behind that. <laughs> his uh, 
his preference in music makes up for that. It's okay. <laughs> no, that's very that's very cool. When is uh, when are you guys gonna gonna swap rings? Um, next June, actually. At Porkfest, right? <laughs> no, not at Porkfest. <laughs> Porkfest's a little too dirty. I have a really pretty dress. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. All right. Um, no, Pat's a lucky guy. You're a lucky girl. I I wish you guys both the best. Mala, is it Molotov? Mazeltov? I don't know. I did it online. <laughs> All right, so so you're writing a novel, a fiction novel, I believe. Yes, yes, I am. Give me a, give us a, a, a brief synopsis. Uh, okay. Um, I'm actually a little stuck with it right now. I think it's a Hunger Games spinoff. It is totally not a Hunger Games spinoff. I thought of it way before. Yeah, yeah, laugh. Yeah, I will, I will. Um, Well, so basically it's set in the near future and I wanted it to have a message of, um, you know, volunteerism and anti-authority and anti-government. So I tried to take everything that was going on now and make it, like, as bad as possible to make, like, the most horrible environment that people could live in. Um... And basically what it is, is people are separated into um, prison camps. I mean, they're basically concentration camps. Um, And the main character, his father was an anarchist and held lectures and, you know, wrote books about philosophy. And, you know, the evil government guys come and kill him. And so the main character runs off and he wakes up one day in Colony Colony 13, which is basically where all the criminals and political dissidents are sent. And um, People like us. Yes, exactly. Um, and <coughs> find out that he actually he didn't really end up there by accident. And people find out who he is, and they decide that they want him as the leader of their uh, revolution. But because he doesn't really believe in leaders, he takes it up pretty like begrudgingly. And I'm not really sure how I get to the end, but um, <laughs> everything will be destroyed. <laughs> I think any good writer, I bet my entire life that George R. R. Martin still doesn't know how A Song of Ice and Fire is going to end. You are Probably all. Not. <laughs> I, I prefer that. That's cool. That's really cool. Do you have a, a title? Um, For right now, just call oh, it 13. 13? Okay. A working title, at least? Yep. That's cool. Are you gonna go for? Are you gonna try to publish it or? Um, I am. If I can finish it, <laughs> I've only been <laughs> writing maybe like 500 words a day for the last few days, and I've been kind of stuck on it. Um, but I do want to publish it. I figure um, once I finish it, I'll throw up a, like a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe uh, for help with that um, because. I know ebooks are really popular, and I do want to do an ebook, but I also want a printed copy because I really, really like paper books. Me too. <laughs> that's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. You, you, you filthy capitalist. But that, that's really cool. <laughs> Dirty capitalism. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like paper books. I bought Adam. I, I listened to and online read Kokesh's book like a hundred times, but I just, you know, I just had to have it. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So, Josh, what do you got? <clears throat> well, I was told to... Um, what happened? I said, let me put you on, a, on the spot instead of Nikki. What do you got? There you go. Um, <laughs> so I was told to check out some uh, psychology or think of some psychology questions. And I guess my real question is, um, how do we differ from status? Like, what what is the driving psychology behind uh, anarchists and status? Uh, do you have an answer to that? I mean, that's a heavy question, I'm sure, but um, I'm sure you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, um, that's sort of a tough question. Um, I think that there's a lot that comes into it. Um, you know, the whole thing of like nature versus nurture, you know, the, pe- the way that people are raised and what they're taught. Um, whether you went to public school or not. But I have noticed um, 
there's definitely like a big difference in a person's capacity to use logic and to be rational, um, to try to extract emotions from decision making. Um, and I've, I've read several studies where they um, gave IQ tests to people who were libertarians or anarchists versus people who were statists and people that um, believe in liberty actually consistently score higher on IQ tests so oh. that might be part of it um, I feel like it's sort of a cop-out to just say we're smarter than you right. uh, <laughs> but I mean that might be part of it there's so many different factors that really go into it um, I think that the more mentally stable someone is, the more likely they are to be open to the ideas of liberty. And unfortunately, the fact is, in today's world, there's not a whole lot of people that are very mentally stable. Okay. Um, can I follow up then? Like, if we're going to uh, say that there's a correlation, uh, is there a um, causal factor? Like, it, it's like a chicken and the egg problem. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, there's a... <clears throat> you know, if uh, you're brought up right, then maybe you're taking less medication. Uh, mm -hmm. And maybe you're taking more medication because you weren't brought up right, or you weren't brought up right, so you're taking more medication. You know, like that kind of thing. Right. Um, so it is, um, of course, it could start in the brain, yeah. but it could um, probably definitely be starting in the environment too like you could be brought um, you could have the right genetics you could have uh, the right uh, pistons fr firing in your head and all that but you know your environment just you right know, poisons I, th you. I think the absolute bottom line comes down to uh, the way someone was raised and what their parents were like and how those interactions took place um, there's been lots of studies that show that children who are taught when they're young to make decisions and make choices and recognize the reasons behind their choices, the things that can happen if they make bad choices, there's all this research that shows that those children grow up to be more self-actualized, which means they pursue more things, they have more ambitions, they have more goals, they go farther in life. And I think that children that are taught to just you know do whatever they're told and not question anything and not have their own thoughts or opinions are more likely to go along with statism because it's just replicating the same thing that they've had since childhood right so. yeah um, <clears throat> like uh, growing up I, I think I was brought up in a decent environment um, uh, but I don't think you know the whole family as it were you know is getting this message right. um, you know I'm kind of a big voice obviously in the family but um it's uh, not you know connecting with the rest of my family is it is it um, because they're unwilling to hear it is that is there a psychology uh, that uh, whether are they not connecting the dots or do they just not want to hear it that kind of of course you don't know my family of right. course, but I'm just saying I'm sure this can correlate to a lot of people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I know anyway. my family doesn't really want to hear it, um, but my family is full of um, career military, and you know they're all retired, so they've lived their lives a certain way for their entire lives, and they're in their 60s and 70s and 80s. And, I mean, I don't think that anyone at that age really wants to suddenly say, wow, you know, I've, I've lived my life, you know, killing people or using force my whole life or going about things in the totally wrong way. Like, no one wants to admit that. So I think that age and lifestyle would play into that a lot. I, uh, I generally don't try to spread liberty to people over 50 years old, especially especially veterans, you know, they're too set in their ways, and I was. I completely understand that. I come from a family of nationalist, Catholic, mostly military. I have an insult to use, but I don't want to offend Josh. Josh's thin <laughs> <laughs> I get this a lot, Nikki. 
<laughs> but on the contrary, on the flip side, I, in, in the past few months, myself and a few others, I think me and my girlfriend in particular, have convinced a very recent gubernatorial candidate into anarchy. And wow. markets and, and market anarchism. You know, I mentioned b before we started recording just tonight, I not only philosophized, but practiced in gray, black, or, or free market economics right. in your life. And that's big to me. That's really big. I, for a long time, I've been struggling with not seeing the change and, like, thinking that these, these ideas I promote are are wasted and I'm, I'm just wasting my breath and I also mentioned earlier even when I was riding home on the bus tonight um, I saw a kid reading Adam Kokesh's book and and we oh, wow. shared we shared a nice romantic nod with each other and, and <laughs> it really it really might be happening mm -hmm. yeah it really might be and yeah uh, I mean what, what's the psychology on that too I mean because you've got um, people that may just be waking up only because the message is spreading, which is awesome, of course. But um, that also means that they didn't come to the conclusion themselves. Or maybe they're just wanting to hear the message. Maybe they don't know what that message is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe they can't connect the dots themselves, but they knew the truth and they want the truth, that kind of thing. I don't know. I, I, anyway, in any case, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't. I don't care how they find it. I found this. Yeah. My transition was 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 ugly, dude. It was. It was. It was. It was a. It was quite a show. Very entertaining to the outside observer. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't care how anybody finds Murray Rothbard or. Austrian economics or whatever you want. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Austrian economics or whatever you want to say. Freedom, whatever. Yeah. As long as they find it, eventually they're going to come to the conclusion of their own ideas. I think that's like the the whole purpose of anarchy, really. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's 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 what I think. You know, you need to form. Philosophy is about your ideas, not other people's ideas. Right. But, and that's the whole point of liberty, absolutely. But um, it, in a sense, uh, some people think it's kind of like a, another group think, you know, liberty or anarchism, whatever. Um, it's kind of a group think, but it's not. You're, if you have the mind for it, you can, you know, process information and come to your own conclusions. Um, and eventually, you know, all that crap will be filtered out because you'll be able to filter it out yourself, you know, and yeah. that's wonderful. You know, I, you and I are actually a pretty good example of this in action. Like, we disagree on some serious, usually controversial things where most people would call each other names and, and you know, throw punches or whatever. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's a problem. That's a problem, you know, whether it's objectivity versus sub subjectiveness or constitutions versus anarchism or whatever, whatever. I just need freedom in my life for me, and as long as you're not going to have state agents point guns at me, I don't really care what you think. Right, exactly. I mean, if I care about you or you're my friend, I guess I do a, a, a bit, but <laughs> I, I only owe you non-aggression. I don't owe you sympathy, empathy, or anything along those lines. Oh, you don't owe me a damn thing. Because I don't even owe me anything. Well, I, you you in particular, I might owe you a thing or two. No, you know. Yeah, I know. This is a this is a pretty good opportunity in my book, dude. <laughs> I I just appreciate you uh, coming on the show, Michael. I'm sure. That, I'm sure that's all. It is, I'm sure. It's the cheap bones, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's the fact that I brought. No, it's the fact that I got liberty all on your show. That's what it is. That's it. <laughs> now next time I gotta shave. You know I didn't shave <laughs> oh, like crap. You know. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's what what's happening in the world right now? Lots of lots of 
thing. Lots of things. Lots of bombs, really. Yeah. We landed a... Okay, we. I, I had nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so, all you. Um, all you. Basically <laughs> took Armageddon in the movie with Bruce Willis and, and turned it into real life. They're, these dudes are like legitimately attempting to harvest minerals off a comet, and they they landed a rocket on the thing. Or maybe I think asteroids actually the proper term. And uh, I think that's huge. Just that that's as big of a deal for humanity as landing on the moon, if that ever happened. <laughs> 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 Get your tinfoil hats out, folks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> It's gonna be no, a long... that's, that's a huge deal, and I have, I have a serious problem with the way that it's being spun into a thing about this dude's t-shirt or button-down Hawaiian shirt, his Don Johnson. <laughs> Do you know it's it's terrible? But so I've t kind of like taken a like hiatus from all news and politics for like the last month, you know, to write, and because there were all these issues with getting government licenses and all those fun things. Um, so I actually found out about it by people complaining about the shirt. I had no idea that we had this probe on this comet and that all this cool science was happening. I just saw all these angry women on my Facebook complaining about a shirt. And I'm like, really? There's, there's a probe on a comet and you're complaining about a shirt. So that's actually how I found out about the whole situation. <laughs> that's that's bad. The fact that that's how you found out about this when you are a – I know you're probably more of a social scientist, I guess, but when you are kind of a scientist in your own right, or are, I suppose, if that's how you found out about this, that does not make good things about humans right now. No. No, no not at all. That's a big, that's a really, really big deal. That's a really, really big accomplishment, and <laughs> I, just, I just find it completely and utterly ridiculous myself. I don't know. Um, yeah, so you're, a ch you're the first uh, woman that we've had on the show, so we should take advantage of that. Um, oh, no. <laughs> 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 oh, that was good. That was amazing. That was. <laughs> Thank God you're not. Uh, you're on the South Shore, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I think we, we, you and I met our our significant others as well at uh at the little cookout we had in in mm -hmm. in Purgatory State Park in I I don't know the town. I'm sorry, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> Lower Massachusetts, that's all I got. I remember it was ironic because we needed a permit. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't get one. When I, first, when I first got there, Dave's like, yo, you got to hide your beers, dude. Don't, have, don't just have them out. Pour them into cups. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I got you, dude. And I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we, we were sitting there talking philosophy with a governor. We weren't hurting anybody. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's how we met, and I... I hope I hope we can get some other kind of get together going again. Me and Josh just uh, I mentioned it to him a few days ago, and and mm -hmm. up here in in, in liberal blue land, <laughs> we are few and far between. And I think we need to we need some unity, people. Definitely. Yeah, there's also uh, the idea that John brought up. Uh, John wanted to do like a get together and do some bowling in Connecticut. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He actually he wor he works at Foxwoods. Jo John is my best friend in real life, as a matter of fact. Right, right. Yeah, he's a good kid. Well, I just thought he was like some creepy guy on the internet. No, <laughs> no, no. He's all, <laughs> he is. We are all definitely creepy, creepy people on the internet. Totally <laughs> creepy. <laughs> yeah, that's that sounds really that sounds really really fun. I, I I'm I'm getting very bored of. Talking to screens and and typing on Facebook, you know, I I like to do this for real. I like to do this in real life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to do it online. I love to argue and I love to hear myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's time to if if we're really going to change this gig, if we're really going to 
going to end this state. I think it's time to step up our game. People really, really need to stop stop using their money and, and definitely stop funding them. I think that's kind of job one. But, but really, on a philosophical level, I think that the only thing that we need to do to get rid of this this monster is to just stop pretending that it exists because it, it just doesn't. It is a hallucination. Just stop stop lying to yourself and, and being afraid of this megalomaniac filled conspiracy and, and just understand you own yourself. I think that's job one. Just just act as if it doesn't exist because it does not. I would say uh, act upon that knowledge and actually, you know, try to be proactive like and in your case and actually Actually, I'm just getting into Bitcoin finally. Actually. I know, Michael, you'd be happy about that. But, uh, yeah, I've got silver as well. So, like, basically I'm trying to preserve my wealth. I'm trying to stave off inflation. That's what I know. So I'm, I'm making use of that knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think that's just the best, the, the best way to do it is, is really just noncompliance. It's not civil disobedience. It's not Bitcoins. It's not – definitely not, not – Legislation or, or, or the state utilizing the state, yeah. and it's definitely not armed revolution. That really never goes never goes well. No, it's revolution as opposed to evolution. Yeah. It's totally different. Yeah, yeah. Just remove it. Just, 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 just stop paying it any mind. I think that's the best way to kill it. And I don't even want to kill it. We don't need to. It's going to go away on its own if we stop bowing to it. Right. But that's just that's what I think. What about you guys? Um, I mean, I think, unfortunately, like, with, um, some things, like, so one of the big examples that comes up a lot is, um, all right, so we should get everyone to stop paying taxes, which yep. is awesome, but <laughs> right now, there's not enough people out there to see that taxes are illegitimate to come on board with that, and so, okay, so, you know, like, Joe Schmo over here is going to stop paying taxes, and then he's going to be caged up, and then he's not going to be able to do anything from inside a cage. So I think that it's really a matter of, like, um, you know, picking battles and educating people and trying to get out of the system in just a day-to-day -day basis, like you were saying, of, like, using Bitcoin or bartering, you know, agorism, whatever you can do on just, like, you know, your own scale and then spreading the message to as many people as possible. I don't think, I mean, there might end up being a revolution someday. Um, if there is, it's probably going to be incredibly violent and sad, and I don't think that that will really help the cause at all. I think it's just a matter of reaching out to people and teaching them how the government has become obsolete. It's not something that we need. It, it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. Well, yeah. Said. I, I, I personally, I'm, not, I'm no historian or anything, but I cannot come up with a single revolution in the history of humankind that did not end with a replacement of power first. Yeah. Um, I, I started thinking about this uh, today, about where, um, you know, the market supplies what we want. It, um, you know, and it does it through a pricing mechanism and everything, and... Um, ba basically, the market exists uh, to supply our wants. I'll leave it at that. No. The government exists because people still want it. Uh, they they want it out of fear and you know, uh, like heavy fear, as opposed to you know, like the market will supply, you know, the um, it, it'll stave off your fears, like food. You know, you can buy food at reasonable prices or whatever and it'll stave off your fear for days and days and you know you can freeze some food or whatever but government sticks around just out of you know everybody's collective fear and until until people start realizing it's not a want anymore like um, it'll it'll go away and the thing is people pay into it but it's coerced as it, it, you know, we all know the differences, but it's um, it's kind of like a, it's um, there will be a critical point, right? Like we won't need the government anymore. People will just 
yeah, there will be this critical point where it just collapses on itself. Right. Um, because people will probably start wanting it less and less, be, like due to an exponential curve or something. You know, almost like how inflation works. Like, eventually, <laughs> it just goes through the roof. And I think that's what's going to happen. You know what I mean? Like, people's people are going to understand it quickly, like very quickly, eventually. Uh, about, about six months, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not that quick. You know, you know what I mean? Like, there will be a day. You use the, you use the word uh, want. People want government. You know, I have a problem with that because... I think that that 99 repeating fuck sorry per, percent of <laughs> um, <laughs> that's enough, Nikki. Come keep your pants. Up, all right. Uh, <laughs> I'm such a misogynist, I know. So, so so I think that that 99 percent of people do not remotely even begin to understand what government is in the first place. I agree with that. So I don't think that they want that. I think they want protection and they want safety, and that's that's great and grand. I do, fucking I do too, but that's not they what government want it without, They want it out of ignorance, is what you're saying. Right. I think they want the idea of what they think government is and what it supplies, not what government actually is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm a No, you're right. I, I nitpick sometimes. <laughs> no, that's absolutely right. Uh, like once people started realizing it, it'd be gone. I mean it really would. Um yeah, because you can supply the defense through the um uh through the private sector, you know, if you believe in ANCAP to that degree. I mean, I'm just saying it can happen and uh, so therefore, no government. You know. Yeah. There, that's it. You, you know my thoughts. I think I think that private police and private militaries are or militias. I don't care what word you want to use. I, I think that's a very very slippery slope. Uh, right. But the whole thing is in. See, my thing is, I don't even think there would be a private. Uh, defense or uh, private yeah. uh, police or whatever. Right now, all we need is like uh, private investigators and arbitrators and that kind of thing. And that's how it, that would work, I think. Uh, there wouldn't be any need for big guns, as it were, I don't think. Um, of course, they probably still exist because they exist right now, so the technology is going to exist. But If, pe if, if people want it, then it's going to exist. Yep. Right. Well, but that's neither yeah. nor there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want um, violent revolution. Is one of the last things that I want. I when I first got on the the, the freedom train, but believe me, I did not believe in freedom for the majority of it. Uh, I wanted to go buy an M4 and storm the White House gates and. Hold the, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. Hold Dude, the, I'd just like to have an M4. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> not there. I actually can, I actually can. Um, I wanted to storm the gates and do the violence thing and 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 all that stuff. And I just, I've, I've done the war thing before, you know. I've, I've fought before and I, I, I did really not like it very much. And I really don't want to do it to get uh, do it again. And I definitely don't want to see. I don't. I don't want the mental part of it. You know, shooting guns is one thing. That's actually pretty easy. But carrying that burden of killing people is hardcore shit. And right. It's the consequence. I'm good. Right? Yeah. I wouldn't even if I was. Okay. I will never be king of the world, and I wouldn't accept the title. For right. sake of argument, let's say I am. I wouldn't kill Barack Obama. I wouldn't kill. George Bush, George, uh, uh, um, W, I don't know, whatever. Mike Bush. Whoever that guy was. Everyone. Yeah, like, I wouldn't kill these people. I wouldn't even hold them in courts or trials. I would just kind of push the, the, the end government button, you know? I'm guilty of things, too. I have supported statism, too. So have both of you. And, and I just say we remove the, 
we just remove the monster and everything is absolved and we just start over. Like, I don't know, just try something new. Right, but it wouldn't be that easy, would it? No, oh, no, no, no. Just saying. No, there is no, there is no easy button on this one. No. Yeah. And that's unfortunate. But would you really push it? Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, I. If I could, I don't think I could. I don't think I could because I'd be forcing other people to do it. I, yeah, but, yeah. but, if I had the ability to uh, start a colony or start a new society on the moon, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's made of cheese. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't like your shirt, so I don't care about your moon. Your moon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would put... In, 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 to remain consistent, I would push the button, but here's the thing. I no, lo I no longer have a purpose once I push that button. If there's, go if there's no government, what, what do I do? <laughs> I'm an activist. I'm an anarchist. What, what am I going to do from there? I have nothing to complain about and, and fight against anymore? Or Start a garden. <laughs> I, can, I, can always, I can drink more. I'm cool with that. I can watch more, I can watch more movies. <laughs> yeah, I'd be playing board games all day, man. Yeah. I got like yeah. all these board games that I just bought, and like I want to use my silver coins instead of these uh, little cardboard things. I'll just use silver instead, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I love it. I made a, uh, oh, you have, yeah, we shouldn't do this. <laughs> I made a little post about about the show today, and somehow Nikki's, I don't, I don't, I don't really know how this happened, but Nikki's boyfriend came up, and, and or fiancé, I'm sorry, and we started talking about magic cards, and I got yeah. Oh, I didn't even see that it got there. Oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, I, I got this awesome idea to have a, a magic card tournament for bitcoins. Yes, Ooh, that is a good idea. I have so many projects in my head, and like most of them are never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that could happen, man. It almost did happen at Porkfest this past year, but uh, there was almost a magic tournament at Porkfest that is holy. <laughs> yeah, only only me and two other people signed up. So oh, Porkfest. That's one thing we missed. <laughs> What did you what did you talk about? We used to hold tournaments at uh, our co college dorm room. Uh, like we do it like once a month or whatever for for I used cards. To play every yeah. single Saturday for this this place called Baseball Cards of Rhode Island. Awesome. So I'm I'm noticing a common link. Maybe what separates status from anarchist is Magic the Gathering. <laughs> yeah. All it is. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Firefly might have a little bit to do with it. <laughs> oh. So back to uh, smarts. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you actually. I, I missed it. I I only came for the like this the the last four days. I think. Right. Bummer. But you spoke at Workfest. Yes. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> And now you get paid to be a libertarian. What a surprise. <laughs> um, there's no payment happening. If there is, I haven't received the check. <laughs> so what, yeah, so what was the, what was the topic? Um, so the topic was actually, um, it was a conglomeration of a few topics. It was mental health, um, gun ownership, and how that could all come together in a uh, voluntary society. Um, I did it with um, a friend, Jim. He's a um, psychiatrist out in Ohio, and it was actually his idea. Um, and he contacted me about coming on board and doing this talk with him because um, there is a huge... Um, I don't really even know how to describe it, but those of us who are in the mental health field are generally very, very, very disliked in the liberty movement. Um, we get called all kinds of nasty names and it's very sad. So we decided to have a talk to tell people you know what it is that we actually do. We don't work for the government and we're not brainwashing people. 
you know, we're just trying to help people learn ways to make better decisions or cope with the things that happen in their lives. Um, so we broke it down into segments. We did do a part where we talked about all the mental health regulations and state laws around um, hospitalizations and hospitals and, you know, drug use and gun ownership and all that stuff and how um, regulation has really turned the field into this sort of pill-pushing, everything is a problem environment when it, it's, it's not meant to be that way. Um, like many things, it's, it's regulation that's ruining it. So we talked about that. We talked about ways that mental health could be, um, you know, worked with in a voluntary society you know, if people need help, the way the people they could come to, the things that could be done. Um, and then we talked about, too, the idea that people say, well, crazy people shouldn't have guns, when in reality, I mean, I think anyone should be allowed to defend themselves, and if, you know, they're that crazy that you're thinking they're going to go out and shoot a bunch of people, then maybe they shouldn't be walking around anyways. I mean, you know, who knows? Who, who am I to judge, really? Um, so we actually, we actually even ran out of time. We talked like way too long at Porkfest, but yes, that happened. <laughs> um, as you say about, I have a few points and I'm sure I'm going to miss one or two. Uh, as you say about in the, 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 the Liberty Movement, um, how, uh, you know, shrinks, I know some of you guys hate that word, but whatever. Um, Drinks are the ones that give pills. I'm just a therapist. Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> Get inside my brain and I don't like it, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how, how shrinks have this, like, negative connotation within the liberty movement. Mm -hmm. I'm a veteran, so I, I'm a welfare whore, and I totally understand where you're coming from on that one. Um, yeah, I, I really wish I could have I made it there. Mm -hmm. to see you guys speak, and I, I really have absolutely no idea who who, who Jim is whatsoever. And um, Jim Cunnigan, Cunnigan. He's um he's in like the Anarchy Group, and he posts occasionally. He's the, he has the crazy hair. Oh my god! I think he's probably watching this right now. He might be. I think, yeah, I think, <laughs> Josh, he you linked him today, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, that was him? Okay. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I'm just guessing. Um, but yeah, I think that I think that's really cool. I hope that... <clears throat> I, I, I tried to speak last year, too. I, I, I applied, or whatever they called it. I'm sure they didn't use that word exactly. But, no, like but, registered or yeah. something. Um, but yeah, I applied, and I was going to do, like, the dilemma of the libertarian veteran, or something like that, and uh, I don't know, with this show and I have some writing gigs, maybe maybe things are going to improve, and if they don't say no next year, I'm going to burn the place to the ground. <laughs> I'll be hanging out. There. I have an Ancom friend nowadays, so. Ooh, oh, dear. Look at this. As a matter of fact, like two years ago, I bought this mask. Oh, boy. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> and I, I had like this four-hour conversation with this Ancom veteran kid that I was in the army with. Like, I'm going to send it to him. He's going to read Rothbard. He's going to read Spooner. He's going to read nice. uh, The Most Dangerous Superstition. He didn't call me motherfucker once. He didn't tell me to move once. It was it was real. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Usually <laughs> I was like threatened with death with veterans. Just boom. But. So supposedly, like when we applied or registered or whatever, it said ex on the website that they they don't turn anyone down, but maybe yeah. that isn't true. Ooh. Oh, that's definitely not true. I applied to both Porkfest and Alt Expo. Oh, I don't know what that other one is. Um, you remember how... I'm not going to start on Josie the Outlaw, but do you remember how Josie and Larkin, like, didn't speak or weren't going to speak because they were being censored on speaking about the use of force against cops and um, I vaguely heard about that. Honestly, like, I don't. It just doesn't follow matter. Any liberty people? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's nonsense. It's gossip nonsense. It's mm -hmm. gossip. But 
So Larkin spoke at Porkfest, but it, it wasn't... There's this thing called Alt Expo that's a separate entity that also does Liberty stuff on okay. Rogers Campground at the same time. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's actually... They, they're cool. They're actually really cool. Um... So yeah, he spoke. He 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 spoke with them, and it, it, instead of of at Porkfest, like yes, it was at the same time, and it was at the same geographical location, but technically, I thought it was, it was a different stage. Yeah. I thought it was a Free State Project was holding them back from speaking about certain things. Yeah, yeah, like right. you, like use of force against police, use of force against military, or. Yeah. yeah, that's what I thought it was. Okay. Didn't they like and didn't they like ban the NAP or something altogether? Because I remember I had wanted to um, talk about how like when I'm in session with people, I teach them about the NAP and I teach them about like self governance and I I try to teach them you know that they are their their own rulers basically. And I remember that someone like told me that we couldn't talk about that or something. So I I didn't even like put it in the speech. Really. Yeah. I would really like to know exact exactly who said that. Um, I, I don't know. It was P, It was a few different people because they told me that there was like some drama going the, on where you couldn't talk about non-aggression. It was it was the same thing with like Chris Cantwell and freaking Larkin Rose. It was it was it's stupid. How are you gonna? <laughs> I really like pork. I really like pork fest, and I don't want. I just don't want to do this. I can down talk the Free State Project pretty hardcore, and I don't want to. Yeah. No, that's not. Uh, yeah, let me take a quick break, Michael. What? Oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's do this. I'm not a free stater, and I'm not going to, if I move to New Hampshire, which I might, I'm not going to register with the Free State Project, but I, I consider them loose, loosely my friends for now. Yeah. So, currency, Josh, what's up? Yeah, let's let's just get these prices in before the end of the show here. Um so uh, last time we did the show was uh, the tenth, um, and tonight is the seventh. <laughs> Let me get that in. <laughs> That's awesome. I have a friend that got one of those masks, and he took a picture in his postal uniform, holding two AK forty sevens. It's the funniest thing I've ever seen. That's awesome. It's green. I've never seen them green before. It's not. It's it's just my bad lighting. Oh, my bad. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get these in here. Uh, so uh, the last time we did this show was the 10th, and uh, so tonight I took the prices at 828, uh, and so silver was 1569. Tonight it's 1605, so it went up 36 cents in the week. That's 2.3% uh, change. Gold went from 1156.04. To 1183.80, that's a $27.76 climb. Uh, that's up 2.4 percent. And Bitcoin went up um, about double the percentage from uh, 368.71 to 387.51. That's $18.80, and uh, that's 5.1 percent change. So that's pretty good for the week when it comes to hard money. So um, I think. Uh on bitcoins, I think we did break 400 earlier this week for a few for a good few hours. Right, there was a quick spike for both, or especially silver. Uh, there was a spike from like 15, uh, 1570 or something to 1680 or something, and then it's been going back down. But uh, yeah, I think they're all going to start going back up. I think the bottom's been hit, but that's my own guess, of course. Oh, my God. ISIS, uh, <laughs> Mujahideen, nine-point infinity, QE infinity. <laughs> they, are, they are launching their own currency. They are launching their own... Actually, you know what, Nikki? I'm going to let I'm gonna let you do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know a whole lot about it. I just saw a lot of news stories... So um, they are launching their own um, currency that's going to, it's supposed to replace the dollar in um, areas that they control. It's supposed to be all, um, there's going to be like three separate coins. There's going to be a gold one, a silver one, and a copper one. And the value of each one, I guess, is going to be determined by how much gold or silver or copper is in it. 
Um, and they're basically hey. going to, do it to um, get rid of the dollar. But the, the problem with it is um, there's all this speculation about, well, how are they going to get these precious metals when all their money comes from oil or supposed like ransom from kidnappings and all this weird stuff. Um, so I'm pretty sure in the next like few weeks or few months, you know, everybody that buys precious metals online is going to be a terrorist, and it's going to be this really big deal. So, you know, that's another reason for us all to be added to the list. We're going to like go up a couple slots. Up to the top. We are, right now, exactly what we are doing is raising ISIS's economic policies. <laughs> we are on the list. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> if yeah. there is a list, which I'm sure that there is, all three of us are on it, I guarantee it. Probably. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame them. I, ISIS is, if ISIS is a real thing, like I said, it's just Mujahideen. It's the same thing as uh, Bin Laden in Afghanistan in the 1980s, right? Um if they really are going to do this, they're smart to do it. Saddam Hussein in 1990, 90, 91, whatever, when he wanted to get off the dollar, as get off the petrodollar as the world currency for gas, was right to do it. Not only morally right, not only logically right, but entirely economically fucking correct because the dollar has zero value aside right. from force, really. And right. It wasn't uh, Gaddafi killed over this as well, by the way? Uh, you gotta, you gotta, I, I, th I think we're talking about Syria, but I'm, there's a lot of names, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> it's all the same goddamn thing. It is all the same goddamn thing. <laughs> Countries want to leave, want to stop using the USD, so we go in, replace puppet, puppet governments, and force them into continuing. But yeah. That's the reason that, in my opinion, and I'm just some some stupid combat veteran. In my opinion, that's why we've been to every country since probably forever. Wasn't right. there like a, a rumor a few months back, or maybe even last year, that like uh, was it China was going to start making gold coins? Was it right? I think it that's was. what uh, Joe was saying. Uh, uh, Sheppy Morgan. Uh, I don't know if you know him, but he was saying the same thing, and uh, I. I looked into it, but I couldn't find any evidence to it. But I, I think it's definitely worth looking into further. I definitely might have missed a lot of information there, because my thing is, I think they've been buying a lot of gold and silver over the last at least four years. Uh, India bought a ton of gold. Russia bought a ton of gold. They're all gonna start going against us, obviously, or us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? China. <laughs> is so dramatically um, economically smarter than America. I trust anything that they tell me before I trust <laughs> cloud bin. They, yeah, they're right to buy, buy up property. They're right to buy up gold. They're right to get into bitcoins. They're they're correct. To do it. Anything that they can do to get off the the U.S. Petrodollar market is is economically a smart move. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, guys, we gotta wrap this up actually. Um, so, Nikki, it was wonderful having you. Uh, thank you very much for coming onto the show and. Asking. <laughs> you should come on. Uh, we're having like a. Um, like a roundtable discussion in about two weeks, uh, okay. if you're up for that too. Sure. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna try to get every guest. Try to get every guest in that one. Right. Yeah, why not? Right? I guess I'll have to start checking the news again then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I don't. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of crap. It is. I'll just say I look cute. That's fine. That's all I need to do, right? <laughs> <laughs> We need you. We actually need you for the equal opportunity. We don't want to seem like we're sexes. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to work out a black guy. I'll like stuff my bra too. That'll probably help. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm not gonna say a goddamn word. <laughs> well, I said yes for you, Michael. So whatever. <laughs> I, I can't win on that one myself. 
right. and I can't. I'm not even going to explain why. So, <laughs> oh, Michael, uh, the next show uh, we got Chris Cantwell. We do. We do. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that should be good. I think he'll bring in a lot of traffic. I think that should be good. Awesome. I think I think warning labels may be necessary for that episode. <laughs> I believe me, kid. I will be drinking hard, and and that one's gonna be ugly. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> so I can, I can play nice most times, but if if him of all people is coming on, I'm gonna use the word fuck a, a million times. Right. <laughs> All right, so our next show will be uh, on the 24th. It's Monday uh, at 9 o'clock uh, Eastern if you want to join us live. And uh, this show, if you guys are watching, will be airing uh, two days from now at uh, Wednesday, 3 p.m. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.